How we doing there boys and girls, Matthews here and welcome back to another video. So I've got a bit of a juicy one for you today. I wanted to talk about something that we've kind of known about for a long time, but have not really been able to nail down the facts for. Um, and it's finally been figured out. It's been figured out through a lot of reverse engineering and a lot of testing, but I'll give some shout outs to the relevant parties for that uh, a little later on in the video. Um, I want to talk about the hidden skill uh, gap, the, the hidden skill that can be obtained when crafting. Every time you press the craft button in the game, uh, there's the opportunity for this random hidden amount of skill to be applied to the craft and has led people to see things occasionally that they can't really explain. Sometimes they've hit the craft button not expecting for it to craft quite as high and then it does and they don't know why and it's confusing. It's hidden for a reason though. Um, and I wanted to showcase this to you, that it was actually by design. Um, right early on in the development cycle of Dragonflight, we got a few blog posts from Blizzard, and they did sort of sneak this in there to indicate that there is this random amount of skill that can be obtained by crafting. Uh... You can see it here. I'll leave a link to this blog post down below if you want to read through the full thing. It's actually quite, still to this day, it's quite helpful for many. Uh, it says here, though, as you craft your item, there is a small amount of randomness added to your skill roll to represent the natural variation in your crafting execution. In addition, if you have any inspiration, a new crafting stat that we now know and in many cases love, uh, you have a chance to become inspired, gaining a significant amount of bonus skill during the craft. This means you may do better than expected, but never worse. The key thing to note here is the entire first sentence and the first part of the second sentence, that there's a random amount of skill that's applied this has remained a bit of a mystery, but we're going to talk about it in more uh, detail today as we've finally been able to figure some of this out. Uh, and in addition, inspiration. So this is indicating that there's two things happening. Every time you press that craft button, two things are happening. Firstly, the game is calculating, well, how much of this random bonus skill are you going to obtain? And secondly, it's then moving on and saying, right, are you going to become inspired? And then is the, you know, the inspiration going to kick in? This is quite handy and we've now been able to figure this out. Truth be told though, a lot of this will require, if you really want to optimize and really want to min-max this, spreadsheets are going to be your friend. Add-ons in game are slowly but surely catching up. I'm not sure if things like Craft Sim are able to take this into consideration yet, simply because it's only been in the last few days that people have been able to reverse engineer it to even find out how it works. Um, so spreadsheets might be your friend, and this is where my opportunity to remind you guys that the Dragonflight goal-making cheat sheet is available to my patrons, to my YouTube members, and to my Twitch subscribers. Uh, my goal-making cheat sheet is going to do a bunch of things for you. Uh, there are specific crafting calculators for each of the professions. You can go into each of the professions. You can do some maths in here. Uh, it shows you where all the recipes are. There's a bunch of goodies in this. There's a little player progress chart for tracking your knowledge points on a weekly basis. Loads of goodies in there for my supporters. Big thank you to you guys. It gives you the ability to, uh, it gives me the ability to make these videos for you guys. But back on to what we were talking about. So this hidden skill bonus is going to make a huge difference to a very small selection of players. I want to talk about three things in detail today. Um, in fact, I tell you what, I don't often do this, but I'm going to bring my notes up on the screen as I think it might uh, be a little bit more helpful for you guys as well. I want to talk about three things. I want to talk about what this bonus exactly is. Uh, secondly, I want to talk about, well, when does it actually matter and who does it matter to? And thirdly, the juice, I want to showcase to you guys exactly how you can use it to your advantage with your professions. If you are struggling to turn a profit with crafting, understanding this and being able to utilize it with your professions could be the difference between something being not profitable at all and allowing you to print gold like a crazy person. Um, the nice thing for me, though, is that this is in addition to inspiration. Inspiration builds have become the normal. Uh, it was showcased very early on in Dragonflight that if you stack inspiration pretty much for any profession, regardless to what you're crafting, stacking inspiration can mean that you can either use lower quality materials or you can proc into higher quality crafts more frequently. 
a win-win. Uh, inspiration builds, especially in the days when knowledge points were quite limited. There are many people that have probably only got 100, 150 knowledge points in their professions. Um, and every single point counts. If putting those points into inspiration gives you a big boost, a big advantage, it was a very smart thing to do. We are now transitioning into the point where people have got access to enough knowledge points that strict inspiration builds are not so powerful as they once were. And because of things like this hidden bonus that we're going to talk about in more detail today, you can get some pretty remarkable results. I'll give you some examples later on as well. Um, I did mention I needed to give do some shout outs actually. There's a guy by the name of Licorice who uh, I have to give a shout out to as he is consistently, in fact, been one of the community members uh, who has been reverse engineering the game, trying to figure all of this stuff out, spending a lot of time testing it and discussing it with people over on the Discord as well. So if you want to, uh, if you want to uh, thank him personally, he's usually lurking over in the Discord. You can go say hi. Uh, link to the Discord is down below. But thank you once again, Licorice. Your both your spreadsheet and your expertise with numbers in the game is very much appreciated. Um, but so let's uh, let's firstly talk about about well, what is this bonus and how does it actually benefit people? Um, the simple answer is there is a 5% of the recipe difficulty. Let's see what that actually translates to in game though. So 5% of the recipe difficulty can be obtained by this hidden skill. Uh, if we pick something simple like prospecting, I'm going to use prospecting as an example in a minute. You can see it has a recipe difficulty of 265. We've kind of guesstimated uh, for the longest of time. We guesstimated that there was maybe like five skill points that could be obtained like uh, to present this randomness in crafting. Uh, but it turns out it's not a strict number of points. It's a percentage. So this obviously means that the higher the difficulty, the more points can be obtained by this random random chance to craft something. Your lower level crafted stuff, which you can often guarantee at top quality anyway, isn't really going to be, uh, you know, you're not going to worry about this too much. But if the recipe difficulty was 200, there'd be up to 10 points that you could gain as a bonus when crafting. Um, some of the higher end crafts, things like the Elemental Harmony, steps up to 275. There are still ways to guarantee these though. Where it really comes into play is on the things that you can't naturally guarantee at top quality. Um, one I'm going to use as well as an example in a little minute is the Earthshine Scales. Uh, this is one of the intermediate crafts for leatherworking. Blacksmiths have their alloys. Uh, engineers have things like the arc light capacitor, you know, all of the intermediate items. Some of them are high enough difficulty that it doesn't matter what you do, you cannot guarantee them at top quality. And this has led many people to just utilize inspiration for the most part. Um, now we can use this hidden proc chance to our advantage as well if we can, if we know what the numbers are and we can try and work towards this. Um, it's going to be very, very powerful. So the, the reality is, is that that 5% of the recipe difficulty is going to be critical. That means you could gain up to five bonus skill when you hit the craft button if the recipe difficulty was 100, or up to 20 bonus skill where the recipe difficulty is, say, 400. Um, when does it matter, though? Uh, I've slightly covered this. It matters mostly on things that you are close to guaranteeing the next quality for, but you can't quite reach them. You know, the, the, the Blizzard has very cleverly designed this system so that some of the top materials and the top items in the game cannot, doesn't matter how hard you try, it doesn't matter how many skill points you have, it doesn't matter how well you optimize your profession tools, there's just flat out currently no way to guarantee them at top quality. Um, many of you might have experienced this when crafting gear, actually. If you're crafting armor and weapons for people, uh, it doesn't take too much time or effort to guarantee quality four, but you may have realized it doesn't matter what you do, you cannot guarantee quality five. You have to be using an inspiration proc, you have to be using illustrious insight to push your skill further. Uh, there's no way to guarantee quality five, and this is by design. So understanding this hidden bonus skill um, and knowing where it can apply and how much of it can be obtained can really benefit you. So how can you take this into, uh, how can you actually use this to your advantage though? 
we're going to talk about racials a little bit. Um, going into Dragonfly, we didn't suspect that racials were going to be that key. We knew that the bonus skills that were obtained from them would be super helpful um, because any bonus is a bonus, right? But never did we really think they were going to be that critical because they never pushed anybody past a threshold. They never took it from you not being able to guarantee to you to taking advantage of a racial and then being able to guarantee it. You can actually see uh, they did some nerfs on the racials prior to the game going live. Enchanting was reduced from 10 down to 5. Jewel crafting for drain eyes was reduced from 10 down to 5. They made a lot of adjustments to make the racials weaker. And that was that really sort of showcased to us for the most part that the racials are a nice to have, but they're not really an essential. Um, I'm going to showcase why in very specific examples these racials are still super duper mega powerful. Some of you guys may have already noticed on screen, uh, the keen eyed of you at the beginning would have noticed that all of a sudden I am a drain eye. I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, but these racials are going to give us some bonus skill. They're going to push it even closer to that limit. Um, and this hidden 5% bonus skill is going to allow you to do some things that other people are not. Time for some examples, though. I've, I've hopefully sort of showcased uh, what it is. So si the simple TLDR to the last 10 minutes of the video is that there's a 5% bonus skill chance. Um, but some examples. I'm going to use uh, prospecting as my first example. Prospecting as <laughs> hence why I'm a drainer and I explain why. Let's bring my notes back up on screen here. So for any of you that have used uh, prospecting and have used dual crafting so far this expansion, you'll be aware that there's a recipe difficulty for prospecting of 275. What this basically means is that if you're using quality three ore, you can achieve that number. There's enough skill that can be obtained to guarantee uh, or and exceed 265 skill. If we throw in some Draconium or Quality 3, for example, um, I've mid-maxed my Jewel Crafter to within an inch of its life. Um, I get 288 skill, which is far higher than the 265, meaning if I prospect Quality 3 or I'm guaranteed Quality 3 gems. Great. But wouldn't it be nice if we could guarantee Quality 3 gems using only Draconium or Quality 2? Draconium 2 is much cheaper, or at least in theory it should be, as it's more readily available. And it'd be really, really nice if we could guarantee quality 3 gems. You'll see here, we're close, but we're not quite there. We're close, but not quite there. Um, you can see that we're still not able to quite reach that recipe difficulty to guarantee quality 3. What are the numbers work on this then? How can we use this to our advantage? Well, the base difficulty of 265... That 5% hidden skill that can be obtained is the equivalent of 13.25 skill points. Uh, now, under normal circumstances, most regular players who pick up dual crafting and level, and if they spend their spec points accordingly, can gain a skill of 255. I have a skill of 255. This is because I'm a Draenei, uh, and this is where it becomes really... The shenanigans kicks in here, right? With a 250 skill, most regular players with 250 skill, they're actually 15 points away from this 265 number still. 15 points away is a bigger number than what can be obtained by the hidden skill value. So no bonus procs into quality three for them. Uh, if it procs, great, but it's not going to make any difference because you're still going to get quality two out. Ultimately meaning that most dual crafters out there, if they are prospecting Draconium or at quality two, the only way that they get quality three gems is with inspiration. They stack inspiration to the hills. They use an inspiration based tool. Uh, they do everything in their power to make inspiration proc as frequently as possible. And only when inspiration procs do they get quality three or out of it. Those extra five points, though, are critical. Those extra five points that you can obtain by being a Draenoi, Draenoi pushes you in to within 13 points. In fact, I'm only 10 points away from the recipe difficulty. This now means when I'm prospecting Draconium Ore at quality two, I have two chances per prospect 
to proc into quality three. Initially, my inspiration, if inspiration procs the same as everybody else, GG, well played, I win. But if this hidden skill value rolls high, uh, you know, I'm only 10 points away. There's 13.25 points available through this hidden skill value. If that procs and it procs high, I also get quality three. Um, this is causing Drain Eyes to be able to produce ridiculous amounts higher quality three gems than everybody else. But only in this one specific example, right? Only when they're prospecting Draconium or quality two. Uh, or in theory, Ceravite 2 or Kazgarite 2. Obviously, the prices still play a part here. Um, in many scenarios, actually, using Quality 3 or, or Chronium or at Quality 2 balances out almost the same, even with these bonuses. But I'm just trying to showcase how this hidden skill can affect it. Um, the TLDR to this little example is that being a Drain Eye is OP. If you are a Drain Eye, you get extra options for prospecting. You can prospect Quality 2 with nearly the exact same results as prospecting Quality 3, but at a significant cost saving because Draconium Ore, in theory, should be cheaper. Everybody else is going to have to prospect Quality 3 or if they want to guarantee Quality 3 gems. Um, second example then, I want to give a little leatherworking example because I understand jewel crafting is quite niche and not everybody uses jewel crafting. I want to use the Earthshine scales because this also highlights something that in theory everybody is, can achieve. So with the Earthshine scales, there's a base difficulty here of 375. Um, we can calculate 5% of that to be 18.75. This is how many points... Uh, can be uh, added on to your personal skill through this hidden skill value. Uh, now, at the moment, you can see on screen that my skill is only 350. 350 out of 375 is going to guarantee me quality 2. If I was to add 18.75 on top of this, well, that's still not enough. There's 25 points short of guaranteeing quality 3. No comprende, not, not going to happen. Um, no quality, no quality three procs for me just based on this hidden skill value. It means right now, even though I've optimized my leather working quite well, I still have to rely on inspiration to get quality three versions of these. But we can fix this. We can fix this. You may notice that I'm 16 points short of maxing my profession. If I was to gain those additional 16 points, if I was to get leather working 100 out of 100, um, all of a sudden, I would actually then be at 366 skill. All of a sudden, that's only a difference of nine between what I have and what is the actual recipe difficulty. This means all of a sudden I can start proccing quality three from this hidden skill. Um, players who are in that position are going to have incredibly cheap crafting costs compared to even me who is relatively well optimized. This goes to show that it's a really high end uh, strategy to you've, you've really got to spend a lot of points. You've got to push all the way as far as you possibly can uh, optimize absolutely everything to squeeze out the very best results from this. Um, I've only looked at two examples here today. I've looked at leatherworking. I've looked at prospecting, but I'm quite sure if you look deep into some of your professions, you'll find other options for this. Now, at some point, I might go through all of the racials and try and find out if there are any other like the Drain Eye that are just ridiculously overpowered. I have a sneaky suspicion uh, that goblins, goblins who also happen to be alchemists, I have a sneaky suspicion are going to be in this same scenario. This could be a key factor to why so many people out there are struggling to turn a profit with alchemy because the actual goblin class out there with their five bonus skill is likely to give them much, much better procs on the quality three stuff if they're super optimized. Um, there's a lot to crafting this expansion. So far, I'm having a blast with it, but I'm hoping that explains to you guys and showcases that there's more to it than is presented at face value. I'm very aware that all of this will, you know, some people will be face palming. They'll be like, oh, my Lord, crafting is even more complicated than I first thought. 
And the truth be told, yes, uh, it is. It is going to be substantially more difficult to optimize and min-max your crafting to turn a profit this expansion. But for people like me who are a bit of a... I enjoy the numbers. I like the... I'm a bit of a numbers geek. You guys probably are well aware of that by now. Um, I really enjoy this. I'm, re I'm having an absolute blast with the professions this expansion. And I hope they continue to uh, reward people that put in the extra time and the effort. Uh, if you want simple gold, go out, gather some stuff, sell it to the people that are willing to do this crazy, crazy mathematical number crunching game that is crafting right now. Um, let me know what your thoughts are on this in the in the comment section down below. I'm always intrigued to hear what you guys think about the state of the game as it is currently. And more importantly, I hope that helps explain something that is... Uh, actually 100% hidden from the game there is no there's nothing in the game that indicates this apart from maybe a little shiny gold color to the uh, craft bar uh, but even then that's that, that that doesn't actually give you any numbers to work by this is uh, entirely hidden from the game uh only if you do some serious reverse engineering did, did, were we able to find this out but I hope that helps. Um, at this point, I feel I'm rambling, boys and girls. If you've made it 21 minutes into this video, thank you very much. Hit that like button before you leave. Consider subscribing if you're new around here, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.